Amen. Please take your seats in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. It's good to be in church. It's good to see everyone in the presence of the Lord. Welcome to the Fire Assembly, Faith Pastures, Fountain Gate Chapel. Um, it is always a joy when we gather together, and that was a wonderful time of worship. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Anyway, so in case you are joining online, you are also welcome. Um, this is um, God's dwelling place, and we are very confident in what he is able to do. Amen. All right, let's pray. Eternal Father, we thank you, we bless you, we glorify your holy name. You are God, and that is your name. You share your glory with no one. You are good, and your mercies, they endure forever. Even as we have come again, oh God, we believe that you have God, a word that would impart and transform our lives. We ask in the name of Jesus that every ear that is hearing today um, spiritually will be open. And I ask in Jesus' name that every heart would also be receptive, spirits will be sensitive, and our minds will be alert to the word that you have prepared for us today. And we know that as we hear it and we put it into practice, our lives will definitely be moving brighter and brighter. And at the end of the day, we will not cease to give you the glory. You are God, and that is your name. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Let somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So God, uh, in the past few weeks, uh, intermittently, I've been speaking on parts to achievement, parts to greatness. Amen. Um, and the fact that we are, God wants us to achieve. God wants us to be great. God desires for us to be great. God's intention is for that we will do well. We will succeed. And that is what I've been looking at. And I've been looking at the various mediums and paths by which we can get to that destination. Now, the, the, the whole intent and purpose of God for that is not just so that we will just be comfortable, but he has a, a plan in mind. And in the next few weeks, I'm going to be speaking on, uh, uh, I'm going to be doing a series I'm titled, I've titled, Walking with God. Walking with God. Um, it's so important for us as believers to realize that the blessings of God are supposed to are come into our life for a reason and for a purpose. And in fact, it's always important for us to be reminded continually of the reason why God will want to elevate you, why God desires to make you great. Do, do you get me? There's a reason why. And in the past few, I think in the past few months, especially, um, a, word of the, a word of the Lord came to me mightily, came to me greatly, that the Lord is bringing an awakening. And I sense strongly that that prophetic word that was given in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 to 3 and 4, uh, Micah chapter 4, verse number 1 to 2, that prophetic word, that is God's agenda, that is God's mind. It will have expression, but there's a part that we have got to play. And it says that, and it shall come to pass that in the last days that the mounting of the Lord's house, Isaiah chapter 2 from the verse number 2, or Micah chapter 4 from the verse number uh, 1 thereabout. Stay with me. So it says that it shall come to pass in the last days that the mounting of the Lord's house shall be, that the mounting of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. It shall be exalted above the hills and people will flow into it. And the next verse, the next verse says that, and many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. That is why I say that we must achieve without attachment. We must do what? So I'm going to be bringing a balance to why we must, why God wants us to be great or why God is going to make us great. And this message I'm believing is going to be for everyone, everyone in this house, every believer. This message is targeted for believers, for those of us who are believers. Hallelujah. And, and I believe that because of the, this verse, the fact that he says that a many shall say, let us go 
to the house of the Lord. And he did not say that when they are looking to grab hold of somebody, they will look for, the, they will grab hold of the pastors. No, he said they will tell to anybody who is known, who bears the name of Jesus, who bears, who calls himself a Christian and says that, let us go into the house of the Lord. And listen to this. They want to learn the ways of the kingdom. And brothers and sisters, I'm believing God that even in our lifetime, that will have to manifest. But if it will manifest, we have a role to play. We have an important role to play. And in fact, what, is, what it means is that all of us, one way or the other, in a particular measure or the other, we have to become evangelists. We all have to become evangelists. Now, this, what, what we have been, what the world has experienced the past year and a half so has made us to realize or to reconsider the various modes of outreach and evangelism. And I believe that it must still go on, but in what measure and in what form. And I believe strongly, brothers and sisters, that this prophetic word is God's desire and plan and his intention for us. I have also known that many a times when your head is full of a lot of challenges, when your head is full of many issues, when you have got many things to deal with, it can be very difficult to avail yourself to be used by God. That is what I believe God wants us to achieve and wants us to be great so that we will not be able to fulfill a mandate like this. Is somebody still with me? So everybody, everybody, one way or the other, we are meant to be evangelists. And the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 1, Paul is writing, and he says, Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation, or letters of commendation from you? He said, You are our epistle. You are the message. You are the letter. You are the video. You are the message. Say with me, everybody, I am the message. So that means that, brothers and sisters, what Paul is saying is that when I look at you, you are the message. When I look at you, when people look at us, we must be the message. And, and, and I believe that when I studied the life of Jesus, people came to him and they were hungry. As they were hungry, they, Jesus was ready to preach the gospel. You understand, brothers and sisters, that Jesus' primary, primary, primary aim on earth was to do what? To preach the gospel of the kingdom. But people came to him who were hungry. Guess what? Jesus fed them. And after that, he preached the gospel. So everybody, every believer, when you are doing well in your marriage, in your children's life, in any dimensions of your life, the purpose is that you and I must be a message. And if somebody can look at us and say, let us go, with, let us go into the house of the Lord and, and they will be taught our ways, it is because then they must see your life, they must see my life, they must see us, and we must be a message. Say, I have to be a message. So Paul is saying that I don't need to say much. My life must be a message. When somebody sees me, it must, be, it must speak. And I remember... About a year and a half ago, no, about two years ago, eh, when we used to have our Friday meetings at, at 7 p.m., at some point in time, I began to speak about the dangers of being a swampy church. Isaiah chapter 47, the verse number one, the Bible makes, makes us understand that the water that was in the house, the water was meant to be flowing. And the, the water was meant to be flowing. In fact, it says... Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of, sorry, Ezekiel, my apologies, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1. And, and I realize that, brothers and sisters, if we don't, if we are not careful, and every now and then we are reminded with messages like this, we may end up being a swampy, a swampy, a swampy church, swampy Christian, but God doesn't want us to be like that. He said, afterward, he brought me again onto the door of the house. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east. And the waters came down from under. So the waters were flowing. With God will be flowing. With God will be moving. 
I remember I used to pray, and, and not because I was holding God to ransom, but I knew, I knew that if there's any form of peace that comes into my life, that peace that I enjoy is supposed to be that I can be flowing. Somebody say with me, flowing. It shall come to pass that the people will say, let us go into the house of the Lord where the mountain of the Lord is now established, and they will learn our ways. They are looking for people that are a message. The world is looking for people whose life is a message, whose life speaks. And they look at it and they say, no, there's something different about us. I'm praying to God, brothers and sisters, that as we walk with God, that must be the testimony of the world around us. And all of us must be evangelists one way or the other. We must refuse. We must decide. We must make up our mind. We will not be comfortable and be in swampy Christianity. But we must be proceeding and moving forward. The devil is a liar. Amen. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Lift up your hands. Just begin to pray. I need to just... Deal with something. I need to deal with something quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Shmakada baba, zini magada baba, sada kaba, do shindi gaba da baba, mande gaba, re sundi magada baba, bade gada sundi baga baya baba baba, laba gada zada baba baba, zundi bade agada baba baba, lebra gaba baya baba, zanda baga baba, zundi maye gada baba. Libre zandi gada tata badi abazundi bagabaya bazadi bagababa ragado sandi madaba yebrende gaba sundi gababa manda bagado zanda badababa zanda badababa rekado zanda bagadi yabandi bazundi bagiri baba ya baba baba zodi baba lagra sundi magada baba zanda bagada baba zundi bagabaya baba thank you Jesus 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 you are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. You are able. You are able, great and mighty God. You are able.
Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. All right, God bless you. So I'm speaking about we must be Christians who are not in swampy Christianity. And, and so based on the fact that we must believe that God, another mode of which he wants the, his church and the kingdom of his son, Jesus Christ, to be manifested, to, to dominate. Because he said, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all the other mountains. Is that we must be ready for people to hold on to us and say that we want to go with you to the house of your father and learn his ways. And that is why I said we all must be evangelists one way or the other. And so in working with God, I want us to take a case study. In the next few weeks, we are going to take a case study of a man who walked with God. And what does it mean to walk with God? What does it mean to walk with God? I don't want any of us to discount. We all have to be evangelists. Remember, don't forget, Paul said, you are the message. Why do you get saved? Why does God deliver you from certain things? For example, this morning, the, Lord, the Spirit of God began to minister to me because I was analyzing, not complaining, analyzing something that I have to be dealing with for a long time. Then the Spirit of the Lord reminded me that he had given me peace in some other aspect of my life. And he, he said, the Lord has given me peace in that dimension because he, he wants me to be able to function without having to worry about that challenge when I see others dealing with that challenge. Same, brothers and sisters, you've got to believe. Everybody, you see, if we don't consciously become aware of these things, we will become comfortable in church. But God doesn't want us to be comfortable. Amen. So the case study that we want to look at is a man called Enoch. And our scripture is Genesis chapter 5, verse number 21 to verse number 24. The Bible said, And Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. 300 years. That means that before Enoch got to know God, he had, he had Methuselah before he got to know God. That means that he was not, he didn't know God at a very young age. He, he didn't have any experience of the creator. But the Bible said, after he begat Methuselah, he began to walk with God. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. The Bible said he walked with God and he was not. For God took him. He walked with God and he was not. For God took him. Now, when the Bible said he was not, the, the, the main translation or the main interpretation of that scripture is that he was raptured. In fact, when you study the Bible, there are, there are two, pe three, two people that were raptured. One Enoch and one Elijah. Uh, Jesus, we knew he was crucified, but the people, one of the people that got enraptured was Enoch because the Bible said God took him. He was not. He couldn't be found. God just took him. That is one and the main interpretation of the word and he was not. For the purpose of what I'm teaching, I want to use a second interpretation. And this means that as he journeyed in life with God, one could no longer see Enoch. As, as he walked with God, as he journeyed in his Christian life, one could no longer see Enoch. Enoch the person, like Joe. You, when you see Enoch, you wouldn't see Enoch. What you saw was that you saw God. So when, anytime you saw Enoch, as he journeyed with God, the Bible said he was not. So Enoch is alive as the name Enoch, but the things that would make a human being Enoch that they used to see before. When you saw him, maybe his haircut was somewhere, maybe his speech was somewhere, maybe his, his attitude was somewhere. This time, when you saw him, you, you didn't see the Enoch that you knew before. You saw somebody who had died, who was not the same Enoch that you knew before, for he was not. And for the purpose of this teaching, that is what I want to focus on. Hallelujah. When you look at Enoch, you only saw God. 
He didn't, they didn't, you don't have to see God because nobody can see him. But as you saw Enoch, you didn't see Enoch. He was not. Enoch was not. You saw another being. Another being. Hallelujah. So, it, it, it can also mean you saw more of God in Enoch than you saw the human nature in Enoch. You saw more of God. I believe, brothers and sisters, this is God's intention for us. As we go on this Christian journey, the, the world must see more of God in us than they see us. It's not a contradiction. Let me say it again. The world must see us and see more of God in us than they see the, the person that we used to be. So the, the thing is this. So Enoch, without the Holy Spirit, Enoch without the Holy Spirit, he journeyed with God. Yeah, without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit, he went on a journey with God without the Holy Spirit. Yet, as he went on that journey, you, the guy was no longer the guy. He, had em he, he was empty of Enoch the human being, Enoch the person, and this time more of God. And you know, it's interesting because the word and Enoch walked with God, that word walked, is the Hebrew, the root word is the Hebrew word halak. Let's all say halak. Say halak. Now, halak means many things. In fact, when you check Genesis chapter 12, verse number, Genesis 12, God told Abraham, um, walk, walk, walk thou. No, God said to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Go with me quickly. You have to be fast. God bless you. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Uh, go to the next verse. Go to the next verse. No, I'm not looking for that. Okay, give me 17, verse 1. Give me 17, verse 1. Genesis 17, verse number 1. Let me see if I am there. And Abraham was 90 years old, and the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, I am the Lord our God. Walk before me. And be thou perfect. So that word, there's a walk. It, it means it's another halak. And you know, God also told God told Abraham that he should walk the length and breadth of the earth. That that word walk there is halak. That halak means many things. In fact, the interesting thing to me it means access. One of the things it means is access. And you also, if you know your Bible very well, in Job chapter two, verse number two, when Satan appeared before God, and God asked him, where have you been? And he said, I've been walking to a fruit. The same walking is a halak. So that, and that is why Satan is an accuser, because he is able to have access. That halak, he's able to have access to your background. And when he has access to your background, he now can go and check if you are not knowledgeable and start using your background against us. So the word halak has many meanings, many root meanings. But another meaning of the word halak, when God, Enoch, who is our case study, walked with God, that, that word halak, it means to, to die. <laughs> to die. That, to die. To die. That means Enoch died with God. And we are not talking about physical death. I hope you know that. But Enoch actually died. If we are going to be the message that the world must read, if we are going to be the message that the world would look at, because Paul said, you are our message. You are our episode. We, to, to walk with God, to halak means that we, the person, must, must, must die. Enoch died. That is why the Bible says, Enoch walked with God, and he was not. Enoch died with God. And, and that is what we are going to be exploring in, in these coming weeks. 
And it's dear to my heart. I believe strongly, brothers and sisters, we must be conscious about it. We must be what? We must be what? We must do this with the consciousness that by living, and, and the, the, the New Testament scripture, that greatly typifies this halak to die. And, and you know, the interesting thing is that when I was checking the various minutes of halak, it means to die, and then it also means to live. <laughs> it means to die, and then to live. And then it also means a manner of life. To die, to live. So you are dead, but you are not dead. But you are dead to, I don't want to jump ahead of myself. So in Galatians 2.20, we, we see the Galatians 2.20 live. That is what happened to Enoch. And brothers and sisters, if one means by which, if there's a means by which we can reach out, where we can fulfill the mandate and be evangelists, it must be, a halak lifestyle. It must be a halaking to die, to then live. Look at this. I am what? Crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. So, I am dead, but I'm alive. Listen, the Bible is a wonderful book. So, Enoch died and lived. Paul said, I am crucified, but I live. So, brothers and sisters, God wants us, us to walk with him, but this walking has to do with a dying, a crucifying. He said, I live. Now, when Enoch died, and like I told you, this case study, as people saw Enoch, they didn't see Enoch because Enoch was dead. Enoch was dead. Paul said, I am dead. I am crucified. Nevertheless, I live. So, people, I'm hoping and praying that we will all develop a consciousness. Let me repeat that. A consciousness. Let's say a consciousness. Say a consciousness. We must do this working with God with the consciousness that by living the Galatians 2.20 life or the Enoch life, it is to the intent that people may look at us and be attracted to the kingdom of God life. Young youth adults, people must look at your life and my life and we want to be attracted to the kingdom life. That, that is what Paul is saying, that you are our message. You are the message. Can our lives be a message? Is your life a message? Is your life, is our lives a message? Before our life can be a message, some things must happen to us. Hallelujah. The, see, it is another means of attracting somebody. The, whether, you see, the devil has made believers to think that it is not attractive to live an Enoch lifestyle where you are genuine in your Christian work, but you are dead. But it is attractive. Why? Because Micah 4 verse 2 says, and the people shall take hold of you and say, I want to go with you to the house of your God and I want to learn. The devil and the world has made us to think that the ways of the kingdom are not attractive, but it is attractive. In fact, it is life. It is life. The ways of God is life. The ways of God are life. Alive. I said the ways of God is life. And they are alive. Yes, they are alive. You see, I, I, I've seen God, God is such that then. I realize that that is why he's God, because his ways are not our ways. If it was left with me as a human being, I want to prove to everybody that his ways are life and it works. So immediate. But you see, God is encompassing in his perspective. So he's not only thinking about you. He's not only thinking about you. He's thinking about everybody else. So sometimes, for his own purpose, he would have to allow you to deal with certain things so that his greater purpose shall come to pass. What am I saying? I'm saying that every believer would have wished that an unbeliever would see that 
it is not right to be an unbeliever. So God must do something so that the world will see that, ah, it pays to be a Christian. I've come to realize that God sometimes it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. So one day, somebody was telling me, that my, people, my, my, God must glorify my life and bless me so people will see. And, and I get, the person's state condition of maturity at that time was such that I couldn't say that uh, the things that you are expecting God to do for you to show that the glory, God, doesn't, God is not interested in that. Because the very thing the person is thinking about, many people don't have God and they have it in abundance. Use your imagination. Amen. So what I'm saying is that, brothers and sisters, that there is a way that seemed right to a man. Enoch, the man, but Enoch became translated and you couldn't see Enoch anymore. So as he walked with God, no longer Enoch. I am crucified, yet I live. I am dead, yet I live. As he had lacked, he died, but he was still alive. And the kingdom ways are still the ways that work. It, it, may, it may not be very exciting, but it works. Hallelujah. So devil has made the us all to feel like, and you know, God, eh, sometimes some things, it takes a long time. Oh. Some things take a long time. Some things God will just, he, he, you know why? Because as he's taking a long time, he's working on you too. He's working on me. But brothers and sisters, we are going to be exploring some of the things that must die. How some things must die so that when people see us, they don't see your name. When I say your name, they don't see your name. And they, they must see God. I believe, brothers and sisters, that is another way by which we can be great evangelists. Enoch walked with God and he was not. My prayer is that even as we go through this series, we will be described as you, you, you are a Christian, but when I'm seeing you, I, I don't see the human being, the person. I'm seeing somebody different. Some of it is not only a spiritual thing that you have to pray into. There are practical things you've got to do. But what I am emphasizing for us is that we must be conscious about the fact that my life that I live now, he said, the life that I live is not the Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. The life that I live, eh? the life that I live is not what? I don't want to paraphrase. I don't want to paraphrase. Ah. The life that I live, I live not by what? I live not by myself, which I not live. I don't live. See, the life I live physically, I don't live by myself, but I live by the faith, by, by, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. So he's dead, but he's still living. My prayer is that, brothers and sisters, we will all go on this journey together. We will all go on this journey together, which you say, hey, God, as I walk and I journey with you in this, in this Christian walk, may I be like Enoch. And, and what fascinates me about my, our case study is that this man had no Holy Ghost. There was no Holy Spirit, but the whole country or the territory he lived, he was living, they saw him and they said, ah, the guy is no longer the guy. The lady is no longer the lady. He is not. And this is what it means to be working with God. Today, I came to introduce it and I came to encourage us to start thinking about it. We will be looking at some of the practical things that we must do and we have to be conscious about it. May the Lord give us grace. May the Lord give us that hunger. May the Lord give us that endurance that it takes. Because working with God will mean that many things. And, and I, I, I'm sorry, but a lot of the things that we will be learning that must die, um, they, they, they might be things that hold dear to us. But if we are going to be part of this move of the Lord, then that must happen. Now, in our own ways, it will be different. Mine will be different. The Bible says, to, to whom much is what? Given, much is required. So maybe a lot more will be required of you, but each and every one of us, all of us, we must be epistles. 
I don't know. I was trying to find whether that epistle means message, but it means more like a letter. Now, a letter, you read it, isn't it? Email, you read it. So people must read our life. You are my message. You are my letter. You are, we are supposed to be the message of the Lord. Let's all say walking with God. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Take us on this journey with us. Take us on this journey. Take us on this journey. Take us on this journey. Every grace that we need. Every grace that we need. Oh, somebody close your eyes. You are Christians. This message is for us all. Take us on this journey. Take me on this journey. Oh, yes. Walking with God. It is possible. You can. It is possible to do. You can do it. You can do it. We can do it. We will grow into it. We will grow into it. We will grow into it. The Lord, the Lord will help us. The Lord will help us. The Lord will help us. Eternal Father, as we walk with you, give us the grace so that we will be part of what you are doing. So that our lives will be messages. In our homes, in our workplaces, in our communities, in our families, wherever we interact with other human beings, let this consciousness come in us that our lives must be evangelistic tools. Our lives must be evangelistic tools in the name that is above every other name. Somebody say, Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So, God bless you. We will be exploring this into details in the 